Well, hello everyone. Hi, this is Pat Giamarco. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm super excited to uh, have everyone for this installation of branding in the inbound age. I know there's a lot of interest, always has been, around brands, and I think there is an increasing interest in inbound marketing so it actually makes a lot of sense to combine the two branding and inbound marketing we had a lot of interest in today's webinar so thank you all very much for spending uh, some time um, dialing in with us we'll probably take I'm hoping it'll take about 45 or 50 minutes to get through the material and we'll have at least five or ten minutes at the very end for questions if you've got a question along the way feel free to use the chat pane in the go to meeting uh, sidebar there uh, I'll, I'll do my best to monitor that sometimes I, I don't do a great job doing that but I'll try my best we are recording today's webinar and I'll be sending the recording to everybody who has registered and look for that link uh, probably in at, at 24 hours or so I'll send you the link to this webinar so we've got a lot to cover so uh, let's uh, let's jump in there a little bit about PWG marketing Hello? Can you guys hear me okay? Hopefully you guys are still with me here. Um, yes, I can hear you now. Oh, great. Okay. Great. Wonderful. A um, little bit about PWG marketing. We really, when we're asked why we do what we do, it's really because a mission to replace what has been very annoying, interruptive marketing with what we think is is marketing that that people are going to enjoy and that people are going to love, and that's inbound marketing. So, you know, I've got uh, 17 years of marketing and branding experience. Uh, if you're local to the Toledo area, names like Libby Glass and Calphalon. Microsoft and the University of Toledo are probably going to be familiar to you. And I started PWG Marketing just over four years ago um, to help businesses primarily with three things, marketing strategy, content creation, and inbound marketing. And, and there's the link to my website down there, so feel free to, to check out uh, more about us. Here is a quick agenda for what's in store for us today. I think inbound marketing is becoming more and more prevalent out there, but I want to kind of give everyone an overview of what just what is inbound marketing. I think we also need to cover what is branding and what is a brand because that's the topic of today's webinar. Um, and then we're really going to jump into the meat of the, the webinar, putting your brand into play into what is today an inbound age. The two first bullets here, who matters and your difference, those two things I cover no matter if we're talking outbound marketing, inbound marketing, those are the foundational elements to a, a marketing strategy. So you can't do anything with inbound marketing or outbound marketing, frankly, if we're not doing at least these two foundational elements. So we're going to kind of go over quickly who matters and what is your difference. And then we're going to wrap up with the four steps to branding in the inbound age. And those are content optimization, promoting your content, and uh, tracking and measuring is what you're doing from an inbound standpoint helping to generate leads and keeping your, your sales pipeline full and then hopefully at the end we'll have at least five or ten minutes uh, for question and answer sometimes I, I go off on tangents a bit I will try my best not to do that uh, this morning so what is inbound marketing I'm not going to read you this definition um, I'll just I'll just say that 72 percent of consumers and we know this to be true start their buying decision their research uh, activities whether they're buying a product or a service online today just think of yourself as a consumer most of the time 
I'm going online, reading reviews, consuming information if I have a question or especially if I have a problem that I need a solution to. So with that being said, inbound marketing is one of today's single greatest branding techniques. We're past the days, and I'll tell you why in a second here, where we broadcast you know, clever, uh, snappy messages or advertisements, and, and we as brands, as organizations, are really on the hunt for consumers. Today, branding is much more about getting found through inbound marketing than blasting what amounts to a lot of times as a very generic marketing message on a very untargeted group of people. Inbound, it's, inbound marketing is not a tactic, it's not a channel, it's not necessarily a piece of technology, but it's, a, it's an approach, it's a philosophy to marketing. Marketing in a way that capitalizes on how we all make our buying decisions today. So brands with an inbound approach, they understand that people value personalized, relevant content and connections, and we're moving away from these interruptive messages that we still see thousands upon thousands of times today. Um, but we're moving away from those interruptive, salesy marketing and branding messages. So inbound marketing, we're going to talk a lot about what inbound marketing actually is, but it's, it's, it revolves around content, it revolves around things called landing pages and calls to action, which we'll get into that in a, in a bit here. It includes things like website optimization, both on-page and off-page search engine optimization, which we'll cover to a degree today, I don't want it to become a search engine optimization webinar. It includes things like email marketing as part of the marketing mix, as part of the branding efforts. It certainly includes social media, uh, and, and it certainly includes analytics. Today, when we talk about inbound marketing, a lot different than 10 or 15 years ago, when it, it wasn't easy for us to track how well uh, a TV spot was doing to drive traffic or to, to drive awareness or to keep our pipeline full. It was difficult for us to gauge the return that we get from a lot of outbound marketing activities. Today, completely different story, inbound marketing, that's why I, I love it so much, is uh, it's very, very measure, measurable. So we know exactly what we are getting from our inbound marketing efforts. That's why it's so important today. Consumers are searching for your products and services online. Are you getting found? There's no doubt that the internet, the World Wide Web, has transformed the way that we all research and shop for products and services and really solutions to our problems. That's, that's really what we're looking for. We're not uh, looking for a hammer. We're looking for, for a solution to the need for a hole that we have. We're not looking for a screwdriver or a drill necessarily. We're looking for a solution in getting that screw into a piece of material. Ten years ago, brands reached their customers through outbound tactics, trade shows, print advertising, and other traditional marketing methods. That's what, you know, I've worked in large marketing departments before. I have a background in the outbound marketing tactics. I still believe that there is a place for outbound marketing tactics. I'm not here to say that they're all irrelevant today, but I, I do think that inbound marketing needs to be more and more a piece of a brand's and an organization's marketing mix and integrate into some of the outbound stuff that we're doing. Because today, we start our shopping experiences online. It's just the way it is. With search engines, we turn to blogs, we turn to social media sites. People are conducting billions with a B, as in boy, of internet search searches each and every month. 
we are downloading case studies, we are downloading ebooks, we are opting into email newsletters, we're watching videos, we're listening to podcasts, we're following brands on their social networks, we're participating in online communities, we're reading blogs, we're reading reviews. So there's no question that inbound marketing is playing a huge role in organizations and how they're branding themselves. And here's why. Here, if you, if you remember nothing else from our 45 or, or 60 minutes to get today, please remember this one thing. There is a fundamental shift. There's a reason why people are turning to the internet and to inbound marketing to get their information. And it's a term called selective consumption selective consumptions whereas 10 15 years ago the messages were were sort of blasted upon all of us today me as a consumer i decide i choose when where and how to interact with a brand and we're getting pretty good at avoiding those traditional outbound marketing messages we've got tools and technologies to help us avoid some of the messages that are coming fast and furious upon us on a daily basis and we'll kind of go over that stuff. So smart organizations, smart businesses understand and realize that there is a fundamental shift going on in consumer behavior and they're adding inbound marketing activities into their overall marketing mix. Hopefully we will continue to shift and to switch our focus from interruption-based marketing to uh, marketing that gets us found at exactly the right time somebody is looking for what we have to offer. So here are some outbound marketing um, activities. I've done them all. <laughs> We're all familiar with them. TV spots, radio, telemarketing, direct mail. What's happening today? We know we know that these outbound marketing tactics are becoming less and less effective. I see it with my clients. When we try a direct mail piece, when we try radio spots or TV spots, you may have seen it in your own organization as, you, as you've done some outbound marketing activities. Hard to track, hard to really get our minds and arms around what did we get for that spend. And these things aren't necessarily inexpensive to do either. But I tell you the one thing, we've got tools and technologies today as consumers to help us avoid these outbound marketing tactics. I don't need to watch commercials anymore. Uh, whether it's TiVo or another DVR, we DVR everything. We fast forward through commercials. I can't tell you when I've seen a commercial from beginning to end. It's been probably several years. Uh, I've got satellite radio in my car. Uh, other people have MP3 players or CD players where we don't need to listen to radio spots. I get my news, national, uh, global, even local news, online today. I don't need to get the daily newspaper uh, on, a da on, a, on, a, uh, on a daily basis. Um, outbound telemarketing, the do not call list. I'm not sure exactly what happened to that because I still do get outbound telemarketing calls. I'm not sure if that's still a thing or not. Um, but years ago it was a thing and uh, it really uh, curtailed that outbound telemarketing activities. Direct mail, you know, uh, doesn't really make an impact on me unless it really is specific to a need and a problem that I'm having. And there's this push to be green. So uh, I think people see direct mail, large, spammy direct mail campaigns as being very wasteful. Same thing with email. Email is part of inbound marketing, but we're talking about email after somebody opts into receiving some of our content, not, and the Can Spam Act basically took care of this, not spamming people with salesy uh, marketing type information. This is the world that we live in today. Outbound marketing just isn't working as well as maybe it did 20, 30 years ago. We have inbound marketing and we're gonna talk a lot about the three legs of the inbound marketing stool from a branding standpoint, content, first and foremost, content. 
Search engine optimization is part of inbound marketing because the idea is to get found when somebody is actively looking for what you have to offer. I, uh, I bought media for a long time at one of my previous employers. And if you talk to ad uh, media salespeople, they'll tell you, well, you need to be out there uh, on a consistent basis because we don't know when somebody is going to be in the market ready to buy. Start that researching process. And that was five years ago or so, and they were still saying that. Today, I don't necessarily need to know when somebody is in the market ready to buy a product or a service. I just need to make sure that I'm found when they start their process online of researching and making their decision. Okay. That is what inbound marketing is, and, and certainly social media plays a big part in, in inbound marketing. And so we're going to kind of go over these three legs of the inbound marketing stool. Quickly, what is a brand? Again, I'm not going to read this to you. I do want to call out the second sentence, brand recognition and other reactions are created by the accumulation of experiences with a specific product or service couldn't agree more used to when I was in corporate America used to say all the time branding in our brand is made up of of hundreds if not thousands of micro interactions that people have with our people our products our services those micro interactions summed together equate into the experience that people have with us and does that experience mesh up with expectations? That's where brands get into trouble. So we're talking about either offline or online, just making sure that your brand, and we'll talk a little bit more about brand and branding here in, in a few minutes, needs to be consistent both online and offline. Because uh, if there's a disconnect between what the expectation is and what they actually experienced, you know, years ago, you know, you probably read the stat, you know, people who had a positive experience with your brand or product or service will probably tell a half dozen people. Usually it's family and friends. If people had a negative experience with your brand or product or service, they might tell a dozen people. Today, <laughs> you can imagine if somebody has a positive or a negative experience, what, what can we do? We possibly can communicate that positive experience or that negative experience to hundreds if not thousands of people with the click of a button. So certainly we have to watch our brand, monitor our brand both offline and, and online. And monitoring your brand is part of the inbound marketing uh, activities. I mean, when, we're not going to go too deeply into that just for, for timing's sake, but, but that is part of it. So I told you at the beginning, I do two things at the very outset of everything I do with, with our clients, uh, and that is help them to realize who is your ideal client. It's basically sort of marketing 101. Marketing 101, segmentation. Segmentation, it's one of the most important elements of building your brand in the inbound age, is this idea of narrowly defining and describing who your ideal client is. Who matters to your business? Who matters to your products and to your services? For any, for any inbound strategy and tactics to work, we have to appeal to somebody. The, the more narrow we can get in this exercise, the better. Um, in, in a lot of cases, this is the first element that we're going to work on, and it might be the primary element that we're going to work on. And, and again, this isn't specific necessarily to inbound marketing, but I think I needed to present this to you because it is a very important component uh, in, in doing anything from an inbound marketing st standpoint. I kind of break them down into let's try and describe our ideal client as nearly as possible. I'm sure you've heard of demographics before, but really in this step we're trying to understand some of the key demographics of our ideal clients. I'm not too hung up on, on demographics part of it, but it's things like are they male or female, Do, are they married, are they single, what's the age range of your ideal client, 
what's the income range for your range for your ideal client if we can pinpoint and describe some of this demographic information we start to get a sense of who your customers may be and we can then narrow down their range of interests and you can see where understanding what those interests are plays a big role in inbound marketing another thing I try and really drill into is what is their their role and responsibility or job level and seniority within the organization knowing this where we're pro where they're placed within their organization and what they're responsible for really is going to help us to understand what their needs and challenges are a CEO of a smaller business is going to act and think much differently than say a marketing manager at a mid-size company uh, a homemaker if that's your ideal client you know he or she is looking for something very very different than say a a young salesperson just out of college. This leads us to the next piece of our ideal client <clears throat> intelligence or dis description and that is, and this is a good one, I, I really enjoy trying to get into the shoes of my clients, ideal clients. What does their typical day look like? If we can sort of piece together what their routine is on a day-to-day -day basis, that'll go far into uh, to understanding a lot of the things that occupy their time, what what is important to them and what isn't important to them. Uh, and, and it's really one of the most important things in my mind to nail down when we're branding in the inbound age because it gives us insight into what they actually care about. We talked a little bit about content and the importance content plays in inbound marketing. We're not talking about creating content for content's sake. We're actually talking about creating content that's going to be interesting, dational, helpful, and is something that your ideal client is going to want to consume. So if we understand what their typical day look like, looks like and what their challenges are and what their pains and frustrations are within that typical day, we start to... You know, the types of content that we can now be creating uh, to be consumed by our ideal clients becomes much more clearer. Pain points, I mentioned it before. This is sort of the, the marketing gold in my mind. It speaks to psychographics. What do they really struggle with on a day-to-day -day basis? And, and how can we help them? How are they? Are they? How are they looking for solutions to their problems? How are they looking for answers to their questions online? And how can we turn that into a very helpful, educational, relevant piece of content that gets found exactly at the moment that they're looking for solutions to their problems? So pain points are another very critical component to describing who your ideal client is. Information sources. You know, um, where do they go to consume information? Do they read certain publications? Uh, do they do they uh, frequent certain online communities? If we can get a better sense of where they are hanging out, we'll get a better sense of where we should be spending our time from a digital standpoint and from a social media standpoint. Uh, and so, without that insight, we're, we're almost guessing. Uh, we might be, have created this wonderful piece of content, but where do we start to amplify it? Where do we start to promote that content where we are assured that our ideal clients are going to see it? And then objections. You know, there's always going to be objections to overcome. Uh, just, you know, make sure that we're arming ourselves with answers that are going to alleviate our ideal client's concerns. Uh, we need to communicate. Inbound marketing is all about communicating in a fashion that's going to appeal to your ideal client. So make sure we're using the right phrasing, the right design, and the right delivery of our, of our, uh, of our messages and of our, of our content. This is really a very quick uh, summation of the process that I believe every organization needs to go through to get that focus. Whether you're doing outbound or inbound stuff, we need to be doing segmentation. And if you've got two or three segments that your product or service is perfect for, uh, we need to do the work up front 
in order to really get a deep understanding of each one of those segments separately because they all have different pains and frustrations and different challenges. So just take the time to understand each one separately and pair this together with how you are different. Um, I can say without hesitation that the most one of the most powerful marketing strategies has very little to do with advertising or direct mail or websites or referral or blogging or really inbound marketing before any of those things are really going to have an impact on any business I believe that we all have to uncover and then start to communicate very simply how we are different how what we do is different from everybody else who says they do what we do if we don't and this is just uh, neuromarketing um, if we don't if we are seen as just like everybody else no matter what you do if you are seen as being like everybody else in your industry there's one thing that the brain sort of falls back on to to uh, compare the options that it has and its price I, nobody wants to be in the pricing game so we just have to make sure that we understand very clearly and very simply what makes us different in the marketplace and we can do that across many many different types of uh, unique selling propositions it could be the product or service that you you offer could be what differentiates you it could be so unique and novel to the industry that that is how you are different it could be a specific market niche that you serve it could be an offer that you present to people that nobody else has the courage maybe to to offer people um, it, it could be that you solve a problem that nobody else is solving within your within your marketplace within your ideal clients and that's one of the reasons why we try and get such a great description of our ideal clients is that we might be able to come up with a problem that nobody else has a solution for it do you have a unique habit do you are you courageous enough to make a guarantee or a warranty on the work or the product that you offer that nobody else is doing all these things are great ways to differentiate your business that unique selling proposition these two things together ideal client paired up with how you are different those are the fundamental baseline, if you will, the foundation of outbound marketing and inbound marketing, and I believe is where everybody, uh, every organization, every marketer needs to start with those, with those two things, but a lot of times we skip over them um, because it's, it's, uh, it's hard work, uh, you know, it's not as, it's not as sexy as, as creating a, a TV spot or a radio spot, it's, it's sort of the behind the scenes work, but everything that we do from an inbound marketing branding standpoint is going to be much more effective with those two pieces complete. So let's get into the four steps of branding in the inbound age. And we're going to get into each one of these separately here. Creating content, optimizing your digital presence and optimizing that content to be found, promoting that content, and then analytics in converting those leads into actual customers. We're going to touch on each one of these separately. So let's start with create. In the inbound age, content is going to be what your brand is online. Content is, is so important to inbound marketing. I'll explain why here in a second. It is, it becomes your salesperson. You know, your content, your blog, your, your videos, they're up there digitally working on your behalf 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. They're helping your brand, your organization get found at the exact time somebody is looking for what you have to offer. It becomes your marketing department. It is your story. And every piece of, of content you publish reflects on and defines your brand in the inbound age. So in this, in this age of inbound marketing, great content equals a great brand. Boring or irrelevant content equals a boring or irrelevant brand. Uh, it's kind of harsh to say. But uh, it, is, it is where we're at today in the inbound marketing age. 
So what do we have to do? I think there's a mindset mindset shift that we that we have to make. Oops, sorry. Got things popping up at me. There's a mindset shift that we have to, to make here. We've got to stop thinking like a marketer or an advertiser, and we have to start thinking like a publisher of publication quality content and a socializer. You know, the socializing aspect comes into play because, again, we're not creating content for content's sake. We're creating content in order to get found, and one of the ways that we're getting our content found is by promoting that content through social media. So at the heart of branding in the inbound age is all of our ability to develop a publishing mindset and culture within our organizations. Instead of thinking we need to interrupt people with our sales messages, we need to start thinking about how to create interesting educational relevant information that is going to draw our ideal clients into us and into our brand. And we can't do content generation without understanding well, what types of content does our ideal client want to consume. And obviously that's going to be based on the pains and frustrations and problems that our ideal clients are having. Uh, you know, a lot of times what we choose not to publish says more about our brand than what we choose to actually publish. So when developing content, just keep these five things in mind. Ask yourself these five things. Use it as sort of a barometer for your content at a minimum. Number one, is this topic relevant and interesting to our ideal client? Or are we off base? Is it interesting and relevant to our ideal client? Number two, does this content address a pain point, a problem that they are experiencing? Number three, is the piece of content in a format in which they like to consume content? Do they like to read blog posts? Do they prefer to watch short, um, impactful, and relevant videos? If we've done the work and understand our ideal clients appropriately, we will start to understand what format they prefer to consume information and content in. Four, is the tone appropriate? Appropriate for the brand, for your brand sake, is it communicating what you want it to communicate? And on the flip side, is the tone appropriate for your ideal client? And lastly, and number five, is does it have a purpose, or are we just creating content for content's sake? With those five questions, each time that you or your team are creating a piece of content, ask yourself those five questions. And if, if you're off the mark in any one of those five areas, take a look at your content, tweak it a little bit, and address those, address those issues. I'm not a huge believer in showing a lot of numbers on my slides, but I think this is an important facet when we talk about content and easily creating content on an ongoing basis. I love blogging. Uh, hopefully, you already are blogging. If you're not, uh, I would recommend and suggest taking a look at blogging because I think it it does so much from an inbound marketing standpoint, from an awareness building standpoint, from a positioning standpoint. And you can see here from a visitor standpoint, 55%, so organizations that blog on a consistent basis get 55% more website visitors than those organizations or brands or companies that don't blog. It's a wonderful way to drive traffic to your website. It's a wonderful way to position yourself as a subject matter expert in the eyes of your ideal clients. And frankly, it's a wonderful way to differentiate your business and your brand and your organization from everybody else in the market. Because a lot of people, I think it differs from, from industry to industry, but I think a lot of your competition probably aren't blogging today, and that's a huge, huge opportunity, especially from a, a website visitor standpoint. So take a look at blogging, uh, and, and please, you know, if you have any questions on anything that we're covering today, feel free to uh, to reach out to me.
um, I, I'm more than happy to answer questions and, uh, and uh, chat about things. Number two, step two in branding in the inbound age is optimization. I don't want to turn this into an SEO class or an SEO webinar, but I do believe that we need to cover some of the basics as far as SEO is concerned. We talked about content. All you need to know is that Google is the judge, jury, and executioner as far as content is concerned. Google and the other search engines to, to a, a lesser degree decide whether or not your content is going to rank well organically in search engines. So in this inbound age, remarkable search engine optimized content gives your content a better chance of ranking well organically with Google. And I'll try and keep this really sort of um, uh, informational. We're not going to get too technical here, but I think all we need to really understand is a, a bit to how Google's algorithm works. I think there's probably two or three people in the world that understand completely Google's algorithm. All we need to understand is context and authority. Um, context is more the on-page search engine optimization factors that go into you getting found and authority is that off-page SEO factors and we'll go over those briefly here on-page there are some things that we have complete control over on our website any page that you have on your website uh, there's some on-page factors that that quite honestly are only 25% of the SEO juice that your website is, is going to get from Google, but they're still very important factors and we need to pay attention to those. Number one is page title. So that thing when you're doing a search, that bar here as you get relevant search results for what you're searching on, this is your page title. We have complete control as to what we are putting into our page title. Each and every page of your website should have a unique page title that uses the keyword or the key phrase that you want to not necessarily rank for, yes rank for, but uh, that you want Google to recognize that page being about. Okay, A lot of times people just have their page title be that default home or about us or you know something else that's completely irrelevant to the search engines. Take some time and really think about each and every page of your website. What do you what do you want to tell Google that page is about? And then use those keywords and those key phrases in your page title. We can dictate what those are and we should be dictating what those are. Certainly a clean URL. You've seen you know URLs that have a lot of numbers and letters after them try and make your URL as clean as possible. Uh, if you've got those sub navigation pages that you're trying to optimize for a keyword or a key phrase, make sure that you're using that keyword in the actual URL of that page. Again, it goes far in sigl signaling to Google and the other search engines what that page is going to be all about. Number three is this description. This doesn't have really a direct impact on SEO, but it does have an indirect impact on SEO. This is 150 characters. That's all that Google shows you. It could be longer, but it, they're only going to show to the searcher about 150 to 155 characters. This is marketing copy. This is what prompts people to click on your link. So the more people that click on your link, the more people come to your website, the more website visitors, the happier Google's going to be because they start to realize that this is a trustworthy, credible source for a particular piece of information. Every single web, web page that your website has should have a unique description on it. And again, far too often we're not putting the time and the energy into developing unique, sticky, impactful marketing descriptions for our web pages. And I think there's a big opportunity to actually clean up some of the on-page stuff and drive people to our website. And then certainly fourthly are, um, are the, the headers and the actual content uh, itself on the website. 
So we've got, I don't, have, I don't have an example of a header here, but we've got the ability to actually tell Google um, what, you know, what the most important piece of content is on a web page. So we can actually tell them, I think it's H1 through H5 or H6, we can actually tell Google through our head header designation which keywords and phrases are going to be most important on our website. So on-page stuff is just 25% of the SEO juice that you're going to get. 75% of your SEO juice for your website comes from links. Links coming into or, or onto your page. Linking to this content that we talked so much about um, it being a critical factor in branding in an inbound age. Just like a research paper um, where, where we would cite another article or another piece of research in our research, that's what this is. This is citations. The more links or citations or references that your content can generate from other websites, the more Google sees your website as being credible, and trustworthy in having something important to say. This is the authority part of SEO. And this is where if we do a great job creating content that is, again, impactful and educational and helpful that people want to share and link to, that's what it's all about in inbound marketing. So you can see just how important content becomes in branding in, in this inbound marketing world. So your content's authority is determined by the quality and quantity of the inbound links pointing to your content. It's just not about quantity, quantity, quantity anymore. With, uh, with Google's Hummingbird overhaul last fall, uh, they're, they're much more looking into quantity and quality. If I had to say, you know, if, if uh, making a decision between getting 15 low quality links into your website and three or four or five high quality inbound links to your website, go for the three or four or five high quality links, meaning they're coming from trusted websites and they're pointing to your content that you have on your page. So inbound links really are, basically they're links to your to your content from another website. It's a citation from another website to your website. Those two things together make up optimization. So every blog post, every single web page of your website, we need to take the time and uh, make sure that we are optimizing that content for the search engines. And I'll have a tool Sorry, I'm going to back up here because I just added this uh, this morning. I've got a tool here, this URL right here. If you jot it down or uh, when I send you the recording to the, to the webinar, that is my checklist that I will give to you um, as, a, as a tool for you to use on on-page SEO. So it will basically be a checklist for you to say, here are the most important things from an on-page SEO standpoint. Does this page does all of our pages adhere to these SEO checklists? So please feel free to visit this. Uh, it's a landing page. Feel free to um, uh, you know give me a little bit of information, and, and I'm happy to give you that that uh, that tool. Promoting. So again, I, I said in the beginning, we're not really doing content production just because we want to do content production for the sake of content production. We want to do it so that our ideal clients uh, know that it exists. Right, uh, you know, it's not a matter of if you build it, they will come. You've got to build it. You've got to create the content, and then let people know that you, that the content actually exists. So we have to promote our content online. I think you know one of the biggest, most important ways in an inbound age is social media. My line of thinking is publish everything that you do. Whether you think a news release a news release isn't important to your ideal clients or not probably is going to be, publish everything you do everywhere that's relevant to your ideal clients. And, and I'm not a big believer in organizations going and, and building out these elaborate profiles of 12 or 15 different social media profiles. I believe that the work that we do early on with our ideal clients 
points us in the right direction. And if we can narrow it down to what are the two, three, or four social media sites that our ideal clients actually use and they're actually going to in order to consume information, that's where we should be sending, spending our time. So publish everything everywhere that's relevant to your ideal client. And social media is a big part of that. Promote your content via social media. Share links to your content on social media sites and throughout um, appropriate online social networks. It's one of the best ways to help people, to build awareness, to drive traffic to your website. It's not salesy. We are sharing our educational, helpful, relevant information. Um, and it's a, it's a very important step in amplifying and promoting our our content. And we need to do it on a regular basis, which, which, are, which is also going to help build our network on those channels, right? I mean, if, if we're sending helpful information every, every couple of days or every week over time, people are going to start to see us as just a helpful brand, a helpful organization, uh, who maybe they're not in the market ready to buy yet, but when they are, they will more than likely remember who had helped them answer a question or solve a problem. There are some things that we can do very, very easily to make sharing easy. If you do have a blog, uh, even if you don't have a blog, there are some tools. One of them is Share This. Um, just a, a little bit of HTML code on a web page at the end of a blog post or at the beginning of a blog post to make it as easy as possible for us to share our content that you know they don't call it social media today for nothing it's social so let's make it as easy as possible for people to share this wonderful content that we are creating and again this is the second second slide like this I, I promise there's no other slides with any more information or any more uh, uh, numbers on it but I wanted to show you just how uh, how well organizations that participate uh, actively and consistently on social media and blog actively and consistently just how well or better they're doing than companies and brands that aren't doing that. So these are the percentages of business by either social media profile or by blogging that have acquired a customer from doing that particular activity. So if you're if you're if you don't know where your ideal resides in the social platforms that they prefer to to um, engage with, understand that first, and then go out there and and build out your profiles in those most relevant social media sites. And certainly think about if if your organization, your brand doesn't have a blog integrated yet, think about doing that as well because over time uh, there really isn't anything better, certainly from an outbound marketing standpoint, that can generate the number of leads, the quality of leads um, better for you than, uh, than these inbound marketing activities. Lastly, and, and uh, we live in a world where, where a lot of stuff that we talked about today you know, on page, digital activities, content, social media, landing pages, call to actions, it's all trackable today. It's all measurable. It's all measurable. Every single page of my website can tell you exactly who came to it. Every single blog post I can tell you uh, how many interactions I've had, how many, how many times it's been shared, that piece of content. It's much more measurable today doing these things than outbound marketing tactics ever have been, right? So why not spend our time on the things that we can actually track and see how well it's building our brand, how well it's generating leads, and how well it's helping us to convert some of those leads into actual paying customers. Big believer in landing pages and calls to action. Right? Calls to action. I believe that every single page of your website, every single blog post needs to have a call to action. We need to take a visitor's hand, if you will, and lead them through our, our website. We need to lead them down a path 
and call to actions are a great way to do that. The call to action could be get more information, download this ebook, register for this webinar, whatever it is, every single page of our website should have a call to action. I'm going to show you an example here. I'm going to bounce off of the webinar or my presentation and show you one of my blog posts. So you can see here, this is what I was talking about as far as shareability goes. So this is just a little bit of code. Just go to like uh, share this. Uh, you can see here that this particular blog post was tweeted 10 times and was shared on LinkedIn 13 times. Not bad for something that's probably been up for two weeks or so. And I've got it into my, my, uh, my system. So I, I continue to promote this piece of content. But you notice here, it's a blog post. At the end of this blog post, I've got a call to action. It's just a simple button that says, want more information about how to perfectly optimize your on-page SEO? Click here to download, in this case, it's going to be the checklist, but I'll show you my landing page for this. Calls to action go hand in hand with landing pages today. Every single click is trackable. Every single click is measurable. So that's why I'm, I'm showing you this. Points people to a landing page, give me a bit of information, and I will happily give you this checklist, which I mentioned to all you earlier. So you can see how calls to action and landing pages work together, brand your, your business in an inbound marketing age. Landing page is basically a web page that has one purpose, and that is to get people to do whatever you want them to do. In this case, my landing page is solely focused on, on getting downloads of this particular checklist, but it's all trackable. I can track downloads, I can track interactions, I can track how many times it's been shared. That's the difference today with inbound marketing versus 5, 10, 15 years ago from a branding standpoint. We didn't know how what we were doing from an outbound marketing standpoint helped drive our brand recognition. And certainly, we didn't know how well outbound marketing tactics played to generate leads and to, and, to, and to generate those leads into paying customers. Let me flip back to my slideshow here. Inbound marketing metrics. I think there are a handful of inbound marketing metrics that we should track, that we should track uh, on a daily basis, if not maybe weekly basis. Number one, keyword click-through rate speaks to the work that we were doing early on. Just want to check the time here really quick. With our ideal client, we need to determine which keywords result in the most click-throughs to our landing pages. I would, I would bet you that if we've done the work up front with our ideal clients, our keywords and the key phrases are going to, that, that click-through is going to be a higher click-through rate because we're understanding how our ideal clients are searching for certain things. I want to know how engaged people are with the content that I'm creating. Does it drive comments? Does it drive social sharing? Does it drive inbound links? And yes, leads are great, and that's what we're ultimately after, but the content that is commented upon and shared the most today in an inbound age is often an indicator of inbound brand success. It means that you are on to something relevant with your ideal client. Email forwards and conversions. We're not talking about spammy emails. We're talking about emails that people have opted into receiving from us. How are those being engaged? Are people, our ideal clients, forwarding those emails to other people? referring us to other people and how are those emails converting into high quality leads and high quality new customers social media engagement obviously with uh, whatever social media sites are relevant to your ideal client track shares and likes and follows and all the metrics that we have available to us from a social media standpoint we, we live in a time today where we can track all that stuff and we can quantify all that stuff. And we can stop doing things that don't work and we can start doing more of the things that we know does do work. 
So key questions for branding in the inbound age, and a lot of this revolves around certainly content generation, but, but number one, are you currently regularly creating new share-worthy content? If you're not, I would, you know, take a look at, at how you can start to do that because that is one of, if not the most important things that we can do, branding in the inbound age. Are we optimizing that content for search in social media? So maybe you are blogging on a weekly basis, on a bi-weekly basis, but maybe not doing a great job optimizing it for search or promoting that content out through the social media profiles that you currently have. Uh, once you know where your ideal clients are going to hang out from a social media standpoint, we can more smartly share that content out through those platforms. Number three, am I promoting my content in social media conversations? Are you participating in social media? I think you have to today. I don't think we have to participate in everything, but if we're narrow about it uh, and if we are uh, just participative in social media, that's going to go far in engaging our ideal clients in a conversation today. And then certainly, do we have an eye on metrics. Hard to do with outbound marketing, much, much easier with inbound marketing. Um, are you tracking conversions uh, of your visitors? Do you know how many visitors to your website are, have been converted into leads? How many of those leads, once you've nurtured them along, turn into actual customers? Hard to do 10, 15 years ago, very easy to do today in the inbound marketing age. We've got a special offer as we sort of wrap up our webinar today, and hopefully it's been very, very informational. It's tough to get a lot of this information uh, in in 45 or 50 minutes. I know we're pushing five to the hour here, but I want to give everybody a special gift, and there's a URL here that uh, if you're interested at all, no pressure, and believe me, I do this because I want to be helpful, not because I want to sell you anything, so rest assured. Um, I'm offering either myself or one of our inbound marketing uh, consultants to give you a inbound marketing assessment. Where do you currently stand from an inbound marketing standpoint? Where does your brand stand in this inbound marketing age? So just ask for a, a couple of questions here on this link. Once we get notified that you're interested, somebody will reach out to you. And you can expect at least a 30-minute, either face-to-face, -face, if you're local, or phone conversation with one of our consultants. Uh, typically, they go about 60 minutes. But we're going to look at your current inbound marketing strategy, if you have one. Um, we're going to take a look at your website, obviously, and the content that you have on your website. A lot of times, there's just some really easy things that we pick up on that are easily fixable the on-page stuff uh, in particular, and we will give you at least three really solid suggestions for improving your brand uh, for inbound marketing. Uh, and, and most of the time we go well over three, but at a, at a bare minimum we'll give you three really solid recommendations uh, because we want to be we want to be helpful. So I'm opening that up to everybody. That is free to everybody who has registered. So there's the link down there if you're interested at all. Please shoot us, uh, you know, fill out the information and we will get notified and somebody will reach out to you. And um, that sort of concludes the Branding in the Inbound Age webinar. I really do appreciate everybody's attention. Uh, hopefully, obviously, you, you're participated in the webinar, so I think you're interested and, and see the opportunity around inbound marketing today. Um, and let me just, uh, i got to get my go to meeting back here. Let me see if there's any questions. We've got a couple of minutes for questions, so if anybody has a question, feel free to put that into the chat box in GoToMeeting. Uh, the lines might even actually be, be open. I don't think I even mute the line. So if anybody who's on the call, if your line is open, feel free to ask the question or put it in the chat box if uh, that's better for you. Alrighty. 
no questions. I must have covered everything crystal clear. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, it's been it's been my pleasure. Uh, thank you very much for your time and your attention. And um, you know, I'm going to send out the recording to the webinar here in probably less than 24 hours. And there's a couple of freebies within the, uh, the within the webinar. Feel free to take advantage of those if you uh, so desire. So, thank you all very very much. And I hope everybody has a wonderful wonderful day and a wonderful week. Take care, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. It was really helpful. I appreciate it. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.